let me reassure you that this is the last speech of the closing ceremony. <laughs> so Director General Al Mesmer, Chairman Al Ramsey, Secretary General Bogdan Martin, Excellencies, distinguished guests, dear friends. It is my pleasure to address you at the conclusion of this World Radio Communication Conference 2023. This conference had around 3,900 delegates from 163 member states and 141 sector members, establishing an all-time high. In addition, almost 5,000 4,500 users accessed the webcast sessions made available online, expanding the reach of this conference to all ITUR members who could not be with us. I'm sure that those present in Dubai feel very fortunate to have experienced the hospitality and solidarity of the United Arab Emirates. Now, as WRC 23 comes to an end, we can reflect on what a great journey this was. It was a path of challenges, of resilience, and of achievements. Looking back, we can see that the agenda of WRC 23 was not an easy one. Moreover, our journey from Sharm Sheikh to Dubai was fraught with obstacles and challenges that no one could have foreseen, with the COVID-19 pandemic starting roughly one month after the close of the WRC 19. We had to endure more than two years of remote meetings to try to advance our work. The CPM text, with its many views and options, reflected these challenges. And yet, you have not let our common difficulties divide us. You have explored alternatives and have not feared to work and negotiate, even on the weekends and late hours. Were the results perfect? Maybe not as there was a need to compromise. Was the process perfect? Surely not, and we should work on improving it. But at the beginning of this WRC, the success of the conference was laid in your capable hands, and you placed energy and devotion in the discussions that took place during the last four weeks. Your efforts now allow us to rejoice in the accomplishments of this memorable conference that found solutions for all agenda items some of which had already been discussed in previous conferences, such as Agenda Items 1.1, 1.3, and 1.8, as well as Document 550. A lot was achieved during the last four weeks. Let me highlight a few of the WRC 23 outcomes. On broadband connectivity, WRC 23 allocated additional frequency bands to the mobile service on a primary basis, and identified several mid-range bands for IMT, which will contribute not only to IMT 2020 or 5G, but also to the development of future IMT 2030 or 6G. WRC 23 identified frequency bands for the use by high-altitude platform stations as IMT-based stations, so-called HIPs, and established regulations for their operations. This identification offers now means of providing mobile broadband connectivity to underserved communities in rural and remote areas with minimal infrastructure and using the same frequencies and devices as IMT networks. Broadband communication was also extended to the sea and to the air, and regulatory provisions and interference management mechanisms were put in place to allow earth stations in motion on aircraft and vessels to communicate with both GSO and non-GSO space stations. The future of terrest terrestrial broadcasting was also considered by this WRC as it reviewed the spectrum use and spectrum needs of existing services in the UHF frequency band. This turned out to be the most difficult discussion of this conference, but WRC 23 found the balance that allowed for the use of IMT in different parts of the 600 megahertz band while fully protecting the broadcasting service. On the aeronautical services front, the conference allocated VHF spectrum to the aeronautical mobile satellite service and determined conditions to protect the existing users. 
The de this decision enables to relay the ground to pilot's communication via non-GSO satellite systems and allows aircrafts to be in touch with air traffic controllers everywhere, especially in oceanic and remote areas. Regarding scientific agenda items, WRC 23 worked on two fronts, the collection and the, the transmission of scientific data. The establishment of additional allocations to the Earth Exploration Satellite Services will provide unique information on the physical properties of the Earth and the atmosphere, and broadband communication downlinks will enable the transmission of future scientific data at high transmission speeds. As for space services, WRC 23 adopted regulatory actions for the provision of interlink satellite, of intersatellite links. This will allow data to be made available in near real time, enhancing the availability and value of instruments data for low latency applications, such as weather forecasting and disaster risks reduction. WRC 23 also approved a new resolution on tolerances for certain orbital characteristics of space stations deployed as part of the non-geostationary satellite orbit systems in the fixed satellite broadcasting satellite or mobile satellite service and improved procedures to obtain and protect national planned resources. And as I already mentioned during this conference, I am especially proud of the final steps for the successful implementation of Resolution 559. After years of extensive work, WRC 23 confirmed that 41 administrations now have a much better opportunity to provide satellite broadcast services to their populations. I very much appreciate all your efforts to solve these difficult issues and achieve compromises, and I congratulate you on all these achievements. I'm also very grateful for the solution proposed by WRC 23 to address the difficulties or inconsistencies raised by the VR and their agenda item 9.2 in the application of the radio regulations. WRC 23 has paved the way for the technological advancements of terrestrial and space services that will make a real impact on the social, economic, and environmental development of all nations for generations to come. Dear colleagues, as you know, the world we live in is changing rapidly. The technological advancements, as well as the needs of administrations, will continue to evolve. Thus, the periodic review of the radio regulations will ensure the international framework towards managing radio frequency spectrum and associated orbital resources is up to date with this ever-changing world. The various items on the WRC 27 agenda and WRC 31 preliminary agenda reflect this situation. Remarkably, the interest in developing further topics discussed at this conference, such as IMT, ESIMS, and Earth Exploration Satellite Services, remains, and we will see them again in the next conferences. The promises and interest in securing frequencies for space and science service is also evident, given the number of related agenda items on the forthcoming conferences. New agenda items have been approved for the protection of radio astronomy, as well as for the equitable access to the QV frequency bands. Frequency bands will also be studied towards potential new allocations for the use of space weather sensors, which would facilitate the prediction of space weather events and their impacts on services critical to the economy, safety, and security of the population. And finally, new mobile satellite services will be studied for the development of satellite-based Internet of Things and to complement terrestrial IMT network coverage with direct connectivity from space to IMT user equipment. Ladies and gentlemen, each one of you has played a vital role in the success of this WRC, and I have much to be thankful for. Let me start by thanking you, Mr. Chairman, for taking us on this huge responsibility with tranquility and good humor. If the plenary seemed to be smooth, it was because the discussions in your office were tough. Thank you for your commitment and for guiding the proceedings of this conference in such an efficient and pleasant manner. I thank the WRC vice chairs and chairs of the committees, working groups, sub-working groups, drafting groups, and ad hoc groups for working until the very end to bring the best outcomes to the plenary. I thank the chairman of the informal group, the heads of the regional groups, and the heads of delegations for your dedication and long hours of negotiation. 
I thank the ITU staff in general, the BR colleagues in particular, and the RRB members for going the extra mile to support and assist all delegates in whatever way possible. I thank our host country for their hospitality, which was beyond compare. You provided us with the best conference venue and facilities ever. Your organization, patience, understanding, and generosity were simply fantastic. And last but not least, I thank you all for, I mean, all you distinguished delegates, for investing yourselves and bringing the 2023 World Radio Communication Conference to a successful conclusion. For those of you returning home, I wish you all a safe trip back and a peaceful and joyful holiday season. Dear friends, this is my last WRC as director. It has been an honor and a big pleasure to serve you and the entire RTU community during these past years. I hope that this community will, com will continue to grow and will continue to endure with the principles of uh, communication, con contribution, commitment, compromise uh, that has marked the ITUR community for the past decades. I thank you very much.